Pro-democracy protests in Hong Kong have become increasingly violent. Thousands of demonstrators took to the streets for the eighth weekend in a row. Police fired tear gas and rubber bullets at protesters trying to reach the Chinese government's office. Nick Beek from our partners at the BBC is there. He filed this report earlier. I'm in the heart of Hong Kong and I can tell you it is utter chaos here. It's simmering for the past two hours or so. But this violence has now exploded. You've got police who come in having fired tear gas, making multiple arrests. I think we can see someone on the floor there. I mean, that is an image which sums up this summer for Hong Kong. People in tears, they feel so passionately about what's been going on here. In terms of this particular afternoon, I mean, a lot of anger here, as you can see. Lots of anger. The police have told the protesters to go. They didn't. That didn't happen. So they fired tear gas, they fired rubber bullets, and they've been making their way through the streets. And so we've got dozens and dozens of officers here, protesters being detained. The, the smell of tear gas still thick in the air. I hope you can hear me again. But really, they've been using round after round. And the question is, when does this stop? This is the eighth consecutive weekend of protest here in Hong Kong. For two days running now, protesters have defied a ban by the police to gather, to march in this way. But people simply are not listening. It's almost like they've given up on the authorities, given up on their police force. And so these are the scenes we see. It's a mixture of people being arrested, I think also being treated in some way. Because a lot of people here, uh, young men and women, early 20s, some of them teenagers, thousands started the day here. You can see most people have now simply dispersed. They've seen what's happened here. And I think, once again, there will be questions in the coming days about the police response to this. The police have been clear. They've got a job to do, they say. They use proportionate force. Many people do not agree. And I think, having seen a few weeks of these protests now, this is a clear escalation in the tactics used by the police. I think they've been embarrassed. I think they've been concerned about what's happening. And it does seem to be frank that their patience is wearing very thin and in some cases tonight the police's patience has snapped. And CBS News Asia correspondent Remy Innocencio joins me by phone now from Hong Kong. Remy, it appears the protests are slowing down for the night, but what was it like there today? Elaine, yes, that's right. Uh, protests are slowing down. Many people are on their way back home now. But uh, in terms of what it was earlier today, uh, the, the definition of the word chaos seems to be stretched every single time we come up with a new report, every time there's a new day of this chaos here. Uh, guerrilla warfare is a term that comes to mind. Street by street, block by block, uh, riot police were pushing back uh, anti-government protesters. Every now and then anti-government protesters would en masse advance on riot police and then you would see tear, tear gas fly many, many rounds on every single street we were in, uh, in the area of Shengwan, which is uh, one subway stop away from the central business district of Hong Kong with its gleaming skyscrapers uh, and its uh, restaurants and its international life there. So uh, chaos, violence, I feel that Every single report that we say, this is the worst violence we've seen in Hong Kong, we continue to say that every single day. Now, Ramey, can you also tell us more about this incident last weekend that added fuel to these already tense pro-democracy protests? Yes, uh, seven days ago, exactly, uh, there were white-clothed mobs, mobs of men who savagely, viciously attacked uh, uh, black-clothed uh, demonstrators who were coming back home from the center of the city from a protest. Not only that, though, uh, there were innocent bystanders and there were also a journalist who were uh, in the subway station there, and everyone was attacked indiscriminately. Uh, whether you were a 
pro-government or whether you were anti-government uh, or an international watcher, the scenes there were just um, really mind-blowing to see that something like this could happen in Hong Kong. Hong Kong, an international city, a city that is very, very peaceful. People here abide by the rule of law. And to see this kind of thing happen uh, really, really angered so many people across the spectrum. Not only that, the police, uh, it's been, uh, uh, there have been complaints across the board that the police took their time to uh, come to the aid of people who were dialing for emergency help. Uh, reports said that it took them 40 minutes, maybe even longer, to reply. There were even videos capturing uh, police walking away from the scene. Uh, the police force said that there weren't enough uh, men to, there to address the situation, and that's why they retreated. But this has left the city truly reeling from this uh, vicious attack. So you have been covering these protests, I know, Remy, since they began nearly two months ago, and you said that each time it seems there's an escalation. I wonder what the people that you've been speaking with are saying about that. Are they growing more fearful as these protests continue? You know, I did ask many people uh, that same question literally an hour ago as we were in those uh, riot lines and in those protest lines. No one said they were fearful. Yeah. What they said is that they were tired, but they also said they were furious. And from their words, they said their anger trumped any fear, their anger trumped any fatigue, and that's why they're out there. And they said that if they don't do this now, then no one else will. And what they're fighting for, to get to the bigger picture here, Elaine, is that they're not fighting about an extradition bill. They're not fighting really to take down their chief executive, Carrie Lam, who they really do despise. They're actually fighting for f their future freedoms and universal suffrage to choose their elected leader in the face of a rising China. And, Ramey, do you get any sense at all that there will be any kind of backing down on either side here in the near future? Uh, that is the $1 million question, Elaine. I have been asking that of everyone. No one seems to know how this will end. Mm -hmm. on, the, on the protesters' side, they say they're going to keep on coming out with more furiousness, with more anger, with more vengeance. And on the flip side, the Hong Kong police force can't let that go unanswered. They are uh, also holding up the rule of law, and so we can only see more and more violence. I don't know what the level above this is. There has been speculation, there has been fear that China will call in the People's Liberation Army. If that did happen, that would be, I think, in terms of a geopolitical perspective, catastrophic, because not just Hong Kong would suffer, uh, mainland China would be ostracized. Uh, U.S. allies would also come in. Uh, U.S. forces would likely come into the South China Sea. We're talking something mm -hmm. akin to more of a war uh, geopolitically than a battle on the streets. Well, we're going to continue to watch it so closely. Ramey Innocencio covering these protests in Hong Kong from the very beginning. Ramey, thank you, and please stay safe. Thank you.